Hi, Donnie. Hello. Long time no see. I know. I know. Um, too long. Well, it's been too long, honestly. <laughs> Today we are talking about real world New Orleans. We're going to recap episodes three and four. Um, we are picking up where we left off with Julie being pulled out of the club <laughs> and saying, what's the problem? And it starts out literally with her sprinting back inside. But this is where we realize Danny's part of the problem. He sees her sprinting back inside and he's like, yeah, let's go back up. Let's go <laughs> back up. I'm like, uh oh. And it's like as soon as he gets her back up, because he literally helps her go back up the stairs. As soon as he gets her back up, she's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. And he's about to throw up. And he's like, oh, shit, wait, we have a problem. And in his confessional, he's like, I was like, why are we going home? And then I realized, oh, wait, maybe Julie does need to leave. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> dude, you're like an hour late on that one. Yeah. And what's crazy is I have thrown up drunk uh, many a times. And there is like, it's never that fast. Like you can always feel it coming. So for her, like bitching to stay and like, actively trying to zoom past people to get back in it's crazy that she didn't know she was like almost there yet like for me there's like a half hour before it finally happens where i'm like oh and i still don't leave but like my body is actively shutting down and i'm like in this crowded space but i know things are going to take a turn for the worse but she was like at level 10 and then at zero immediately this was this was dark. Yeah. And like it really showed just how much older these people were and that this wasn't like watching. I don't know. Like, honestly, none of the Bravo shows, even like Vanderpump Rules. None of we don't ever see this mm -mm. on TV anymore. This just no. doesn't happen. We don't watch people getting this fucked up and puking like this. So. Mm. <laughs> Melissa looks just like I she everyone's disgusted. <laughs> um she's she's like leaning over, they have the window rolled down, and then at one point they open the car door and she just I mean fully from the I mean it's a SUV fully head first falls onto the concrete. Like a what's that called? A slinky. <laughs> like like <laughs> truly. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> But I mean, what her head broke the fall. Yeah. Like that was a lot. And then so they they get her up and then she's like, get off of me. Get off of me. And immediately runs into a tree. <laughs> and it's like into the tree. She's like, get off me, tree. And then is again gets somehow gets in the house. Tokyo went a little too above and beyond. Uh-huh. Like she's puking everywhere. I mean, this is like disgusting. She's like puking and then she knocks over the trash can she was puking in. And I was like, can someone get a fucking paper towel already? They're like long. They're closing in on the vomit, like uh, going trailing down the out of the room. I'm like, can't, we don't need to show it like cameraman. Go get a yeah. paper towel. I don't need to see that <laughs> close up. Yeah. I why did we need why, to see that? I don't know why. I guess. I think they, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it was to edit, to show like how bad she was and like to really make us feel gross about how she was. I don't know. I didn't need it. No. I didn't need it. <laughs> and obviously Matt is disgusted. Anyone would be. Right. Uh, but then he was like, this is why I don't go clubbing. I'm like, nobody does this though. Right. This is just Julie. No one yeah. else is like this. And, and you uh, don't go clubbing because it was a drag show. Let's be honest, Matthew, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but why did Tokyo need to sleep next to her bed? Where she just threw up on the floor. And like, yeah, I don't know why he had to sleep there. It was very odd. And just like a towel, just he just put a towel down and slept on it like a dog. Like, at least bring the mattress over if you feel that's necessary. But it's not necessary. And sleep in your bed. That, yeah. Well, that's it's right true. there. That's true, too. <laughs> right. It's right there. Your bed is right there. 
You could just yeah. sleep in your bed. She's asleep. She's passed out. Go to go to go to sleep in your bed. Like, what are you worried she's going to do? That. A confessional from him would have been nice to explain I why agree. he felt like he needed to do that. <laughs> I agree. We actually I did need some clarification. Yeah. The only reason it's acceptable is if like <laughs> if he knew someone that died in their sleep after being drunk or something, in which case a confessional would have been nice. But any other reason there's n- there is no other reason. Because it was just inexplicably he's next to the puke on the bed. And then the next morning, that bitch, she's like, I threw up, which is great because I feel fine. And then she's doing and then she's passive aggressively doing yoga in the middle of the living room Uh for everyone to see. (laughs) She. (laughs) Oh, my God. I have no words. And then while Melissa was in the kitchen eating breakfast or whatever and she was like laughing about it in a way that you and I were just laughing about it like a can you believe the gall of this bitch way (laughs) and I can't believe how calm Tokyo is I know I really cannot I don't like he really has found some sense of inner peace Uh because I don't know how he's doing that I don't know how he's like, excuse me. How are you not waking up saying thank you so much Uh for taking care of me last Uh night? That's the rule. The rule is if someone took care of you when you were puking, you wake up and thank them. Yes. That's the rule. Okay. Uh, If anyone cleans up your vomit, you thank them. She is a garbage human being. I hate her so much. Me like too. that was like when you do something, that's etiquette. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cause like, let's face it. If you're going to be drunk and sloppy, that's the least you can do. Right. I'm so mad at her. I hate her so much. <laughs> I have CPS PTSD from, <laughs> from this conversation. Julie, yeah. From Julie. Um, so we find out that Danny has an adopted daughter and that he was married and now divorced. Um, he's got, a, he lived a life, my friend. He did. Um, and we finally find out what happened with Paul. Mm. Paul started dating their mutual best friend <laughs> behind his back. <sighs> yeah. And when Danny wouldn't get into it, the the previous episode, that is where my mind went to. Well, oh, really? I thought, yeah. I thought they just slept together, but dated is certainly a choice. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like a double betrayal. It's like yeah. friend and boyfriend's like, uh-huh. oh, you lose two people in that process. Yeah. Um, and then they, I love how he texts him. I like the way they showed the text. <laughs> I really want to know how much time went by in between it. Cause you know, when you send a big text like that, they made it seem like it was immediate. Yeah. But I wonder if it was immediate. Cause like, you know, <laughs> when you send that text, it made it seem like it was right then, but was it like an hour? Right. <sighs> yeah. That's true. But I also wonder if MTV contacted Paul ahead of time and was like, be on standby. Danny's here. We are going to bring (laughs) bring you on. And are you cool? Would you be willing? That's a good point. I like that. Because I wonder if he probably would have had to been quarantined too, right? Right. Because he wouldn't have been able to come and film and be Uh around the cast. Good point. So yeah, he's Very probably in the point. hotel waiting for something to do. <laughs> Very good point. Well done. Well done. Thank done. you. I'm a sleuth. I love it. Um, all right. Then this bitch, Julie, suddenly runs into Danny and Melissa's room. Did he do that to me? <gasps> Did he do that to me with a scratch on her? <laughs> and I I I couldn't even no. believe. And so Melissa's like, what are you talking about? Well, he has to know that I can't just be rap like that. Oh, okay. Okay. This is infuriating no matter what, especially like when Melissa breaks down the reasons as to why later, it's infuriating no matter what. But to come off of not thanking these people for taking care of you, not thanking Tokyo for taking care of you, and now we're blaming him for the marks on your body. Just shut up. I, the fact that you went there. Yeah. 
You didn't once ask these people what happened. What happened? I I black out after this one part. I don't remember mm-hmm. anything after that. Like you should have been asking them to fill in blanks. That's the mm-hmm. rule. Again, there's etiquette when you black out. Okay, as someone who did a lot of blacking out in my day, mm-hmm. you wake up. When you taste the vomit, you go, oh, my God. Okay, so what happened? I only remember, the last thing I remember is this. And then they all go, okay, so what happened is, and then they fill in the blanks for you. Mm -hmm. She didn't ask one question. And then she saw this mark and was like, did he do that to me? Excuse me? And I, we saw that there were marks there. That's true. And we saw her fall on the street and hit herself into the tree, whatever. So I'm sure she was in some kind of pain, but you were just doing yoga. So oh, you, yeah. you feel fine. <laughs> uh-huh. Don't act like you're now injured. Right. Yes. Oh, so then they go to Cafe Du Monde where they film the intro. And she's she's being like she's just being ridiculous when she's talking to, to Danny, but Danny's like playing into it. She's like, I love being there last night. You know, it's like, like no one, I just felt like I could be free, you know? And like, no one was going to like, like hit on me. And then Danny goes, yeah, like no one was going to touch you. And then Julie goes, well, no one's going to touch me except for fucking Tokyo. And I'm like, Danny, can you stop fucking humoring this woman? Like Danny, I feel like, I don't know if Danny's unaware or I almost wonder if he's doing it on purpose. I'm like, stop, stop feeding this woman. Yeah, I will say this interaction, not even just this interaction, some of the ways he's acting in this show, this go around, he, I like him less than the memory I had of him. Mm hmm. Me too. Yeah. He's and messy. He's a messy little queen a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And he's yeah. got a lot of anger and issues. Uh-huh. like he's been yeah. through a lot. And mm-hmm. also he's been living like secluded. Yeah. So, you know, his social skills are kind of oh, rusty. That's true. Yeah. You know, but I did love in this scene, Melissa and Tokyo. I love their little budding friendship because when Julie's doing that whole thing. Yeah. Melissa keeps like checking in on him and saying like, you're heated right now, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. And he like he can hear it, but he's uh-huh. somehow able to stay calm. Uh-huh. And he says it perfectly. He's like, it paints me as this angry black dude that's taking away this helpless white woman for no reason. Yeah. And that is not at all what happened. None. Thank God cameras were there to capture it. Yeah. <laughs> and so Tokyo and Julie talk when they get back to the house. And this this bitch. <laughs> this bitch says, "You gotta let me be me, man. Body autonomy. Shut up." Yeah, I just feel like she is using because she knows. I think the conversation that's going to come from Melissa and Tokyo about how it looked. So I think she felt like buzzwords would be used against her. So now Mm. she had to pull anything she could to throw at him. So she knows how this is going to play out? I think so. Okay. I think she's smarter than we think she is. Ew, which makes her worse. She is? Yeah. (laughs) She's She's horrible. Uh Uh-huh. And then he's like, look, you know, because she's like, just let me do my thing. And he's like, no, that's it. Not that I'm either with you 100 percent or I'm not with you at all. She's like, can't be like that. Can't <laughs> be like that. OK. And then she gets mad because it's not going her way. And she takes her salad and she goes, motherfucker. <laughs> and I was like, that is rude. Who has to clean that up? Right. I hope that them. looks that looks really messy. And I was very pissed off about that salad being thrown. I was like, well, not because it went everywhere. It went like on the little table. It went underneath the the little patio furniture. I was like, yes, was- a salad is so many little parts and then like covered in dressing. Dressing. As well. So now not only are we picking things up, but then there does need to be a, a detailed a wipe. wipe down. Yeah. And, and oily dressing. It's like yeah. not that easy to clean. I was like, well, that no. was then you just gave them 15 minutes of cleanup. Uh-huh. And you better clean it up, Julie. <laughs> um, Paul arrives and it was so interesting to see his face. It and, was. Like, and everything about him. 
Yeah, he looks like a pimp in a play about Miami. Like, it was very birdcage. <laughs> like, there were... <laughs> Exactly like the what ha- he looked like the haircut, the mustache, and the Hawaiian shirt. Like you and the necklace, you need to pick two. I'll let you have two, but all four can't happen. Wait, though, but Birdcage is the best read ever. That is so <laughs> true. Um, he he knows what he did is unforgivable, but he wants to take ownership, and they get fantastic closure. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. Well done. I felt like Danny, <laughs> Danny was like, all right, let's close that chapter. I hope, I hope it helped. Me too. Please, Jesus. <laughs> he <laughs> needs it. Danny needs it. <laughs> we need Danny to get some peace in his life. Please. <laughs> now this next part is, uh, is a lot. Julie's in the hot tub and Melissa and Kelly overhear it. <gasps> I, uh, Julie's talking to her husband and she's like, I just don't know how I'm going to make good TV. I mean, I took a bullet for the whole cast and got drunk. I mean, I would try and flirt up with these guys, but I just can't stomach it. <laughs> like. This all just tracks. This is how she was on the challenge. Uh-huh. She just she. I, I, <sighs> and that's why I think she's smarter than we think she is. I think that. She does know the conversations that are going to come her way. And I do think she knows what she's doing. I was shocked that producers chose to put this in and let us see, like, this bitch is here to create reality TV. Like, this this woman came with her own agenda. (laughs) This is not the show we're here to make. She is rogue. She... And like, after all these years, didn't you watch the first two homecomings? Right. You don't need to do that. No. Just come on and be real. Yeah. It's what we're fascinated by is how far you guys have come and what you're bringing back. Uh-huh. We don't need to see fake drama. Right. Or even really any drama will happen. So it was disturbing. 100%. <laughs> Like, really, and we all love reality TV, but it's like, wow, to see someone, to really see and hear someone talk about how they're manufacturing drama, I think it was so insulting to us as reality TV watchers and recappers. It was like, how dare you? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Especially because, like, on Bravo, we know it happens, but no one is ever ballsy enough to let us hear that they know that that's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. How dare she? <laughs> uh, the next day, Jamie, Jamie lets Julie know that Tokyo is going to move rooms. <laughs> and Julie is like shocked. Julie's shocked, but it's like, bitch, don't you think he like scratched your arm and like caused you bodily harm? Right. And she's like insulted. She's like, so then what? Like, why don't you switch rooms with him? <laughs> and he's like, oh. <laughs> She's like, you don't want to do that. So I'm going to be alone in the room. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. everyone is afraid of you. <laughs> you puked in your bed and I lie in it, honey. I don't know. <laughs> what do you want us to say? Right. Yeah, no one wants to room with you, psycho. The only one that probably would personality wise is Matt. But because that would be sharing a room with a woman, he could never. <laughs> no. God is watching. Um, Melissa tell Melissa pulls Tokyo aside though. And she's like, look, last night we heard Julie talking about how she's trying to make a TV show and this for her. And Melissa just explains this so well. She's like the optics on this. Like, what's my responsibility here? Mm-hmm. Uh, as the only woman of color, do I come to your defense or do I kind of not come to your your to your defense because you know when I was on the show I was the angry woman of color mm-hmm. always bringing up race but I also don't want to sit back and watch this happen because I feel like I have a responsibility to help you out and defend you and so Tokyo decides to gather the house and have a conversation and it's like very full circle 
because before last the original time they all gathered together to have a conversation about how Tokyo was a nightmare. But now he's gathering them all together to talk about what's going on with Julie. Now this conversation, uh, Melissa is just so like, she's just so good. She is. The way, like the way she, she just, she's so focused and she says the optics of a white woman saying a black man hurt her is not going to work for me. And I don't want to be on that kind of a TV show. I I mean, what she's saying here is absolutely right. But again, I cannot stress how much I love Melissa. I don't know if I need her to be a real housewife or to be a co-host of The View. But this cannot be the end I see it of can't. Melissa. <laughs> it can't. Because it just comes out of her mouth. Yes. Uh huh. That's a good point because I don't like the view. That would be interesting. Hmm. Now it was. I think it was uh, TJ Sky Ritchie who talked about how she'd be a great housewife. That they should build the new, like, because you know they're doing like the new mm-hmm. Roni. Um, that would be to I build it around that. Melissa. I said that as well. I mean, oh. I said it too. I said it too. No, I never don't know mind. I, I take pub- it back. Scratch <laughs> that from the record. I don't know if I ever publicly said it, but like Johnny said watching it. this, I was like, oh my God, she should be in the new Roni. But she has said, like, I am not Real Housewives material. One I get bit. that. She was like, I am a sweatpants wearing bitch. And like, when you think I'm dressed up, when we go out on the real world or whatever, like that is the nicest thing I own. <laughs> so I get that. Cause I always say that, like, if you, when people say things to me, like, what if you were on a reality show? I'm like, they'd have no content. I don't like yeah. to go out. I don't like, if they invited me to an event, I'd be like, Oh, Even I don't want to go. She's going to bed at eight o'clock every night. <laughs> yeah. So I get that. So maybe just like the view, because I do want to constantly or even give her her own fucking talk show. I don't know, because she is really like her 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 perspective, her her form of communication. I Mm -hmm. absorb it. I love it. Um, And so that's how the episode ends. But we're going to go right into episode four. And so. um, I have this. My notes are absolutely terrible for this episode it starts with a <laughs> quote and i have no idea who said it i'll say the quote and we'll play a guessing game oh who said it'll it. be like the game they play later in the season okay go yeah on. okay okay <laughs> it, the quote is i wasn't aware of what was going on that everyone else was seeing is that julie it has to be <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it has to be julie it has to be. I think that she's doing her thing again. We'll, we'll just say it's Julie. We'll put it's words Julie. in her mouth. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think she's doing her thing again when Tokyo explained to her why everyone was mad at her. And she's like, oh, I get it now. This sounds like she's doing the same thing. <laughs> and then, and oh, 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 oh. And I know what she was talking about. She, because Tokyo's response is, that's why we communicate in the first place. She was acting. She, that was her way of saying, um, because they're like talking about how she was she should there because uh melissa's like you also fell out of a car mm-hmm. onto the cement and ran into a tree and then she's like well i wasn't aware of what was going on yes. that everyone else was seeing and so tokyo's like well that's how we communicate in the first place that's what it was because yes. it's like bitch you blacked out it's simple ask us a question uh-huh. what happened that's but the she does normal say, thing yeah i I don't want to give her the benefit of the doubt by any means, but she did say this is the only time, this is the second time she's ever drank her whole life. So if that is the truth, I I do wonder if that behavior is something that we've learned. Like, you know, to ask questions and then uh, thank people and then whatever. Or if that's just common decency. I think there is a a line where it's both. But like I said, I have blacked out many a times. I've thrown Mm, up where I shouldn't have many a times. So like for me to say, oh, my God, know how to do that. But for her, it could be like tying your shoe. And if you haven't done it, you haven't done it. True. I am a I am a seasoned pro. (laughs) Not bragging. (laughs) <laughs> in fact quite the opposite <laughs> shameful really <laughs> um and then danny chimes in this is where you know danny's toxicity mm-hmm. is just really yeah. 
really shining through. And he's like, you know, this wasn't just about that. This was about getting us in the car and it was force and it was violent. Danny? Danny. I think this might be um not popular opinion. I think Danny is the white gay that like people of color talk about and gays of color talk about. Like you're not as helpful as you think you are. And yes, you are part of a marginalized group, but like we got you beat <laughs> in a contest of like who's fucked over the most. We got you beat. So I think Danny focuses so much on the struggles he had to overcome through his own journey being on the show that he almost doesn't care. Like this would be a perfect time to be an ally and say, even not saying anything would be better than taking Julie's side. Yeah. Force and violent are not the words to use right now after no. they just explained right. what they just explained. Uh -huh. Did you not listen? <laughs> Did you not hear what they literally just said? Apparently it wasn't not. force and violent. They were trying to get a bitch out of there whose security wanted to get out of there. Right. Okay. Danny. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, and then fucking Julie. Now Julie goes back and she tried this in the first episode. She's like, you've been planning this since you got here, Melissa. <laughs> okay, bitch. Don't <laughs> even. Uh, uh, and they're and Melissa's like, no, I haven't. Like, okay, like it's just and so they're like, we overheard you in the hot tub uh -huh. talking to your husband about how you're trying to make a TV show. Okay. And that is not, we're not here to do that. Julie's like, well, someone take the mantle from me so the show isn't boring. <laughs> Girl. And they're all just like, what? Like, this is no one. Tokyo and Kelly are like, there's no need to create drama. Okay. No, no need at all. It will have like, this is not, the show is not about this. Like real conversations are going to happen. This is about how far we've grown. And what's crazy is this is the third season of this. So like, just watch what the others did. It's literally <laughs> in season one in New York's homecoming. Um, Eric Nice isn't even there. Like they, he has COVID, so they bring him in on a screen the entire time. So, so like it truly is just about watching clips of you being a fool when you were younger, and then talking about, like you said, how you've Literally. grown now. Yeah, that's the template. Yes. What are you? Oh God. And so after the meeting, Julie's all paranoid. Like, she's like, I know those fucking mean girls. They're over there. They're just talking shit about me. And like, Kelly's coming up the stairs and Julie's like, oh, so is everyone just like talking about me now? And they're like, what? Kelly's like, I was going to go to the park. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, not happening. Um, now they're going to go on the swamp tour, though. Mm -hmm. And I love Melissa. Melissa's <laughs> like, look, I'm not worried about going on the swamp tour and having another like racist tour guide. I just don't want to go because it's outside. <laughs> I related to that so much. It's yeah. humid. It's like windy. They were all laughing and seemed to be having a good time. But like just watching them do it made me miserable. <laughs> <laughs> but then she was cute. She's like, I enjoyed it. Yeah. It's the slow <laughs> parts. Yeah. I did love, though, that th this is what the show is about. Jamie apologizes for not being understanding about the mm -hmm. N-word before. And we really do see how far we have come since the beginning yeah. of the show when Melissa was basically like, you know, edited essentially to look like the angry black girl. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's what we did. Yeah. Even on Bravo shows, we watched that. Like when I watch old Vanderpump Rules episodes, I'm like, wow, yeah. they really made anyone who brought up an issue be like the problem. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, have some fun. It's like <laughs> we were not sensitive very recently. So, yeah. Um, Shorty and Mercy, uh, Melissa's parents. Could they be any cuter? But I we love didn't, them so much. We didn't meet them. Apparently, I don't remember them in the first one. Do you? She said they visited, but it was edited out. Yeah. Okay. Cause yeah. I was like, I would have remembered that. Uh huh. Yeah. 
Um, so it turns out Melissa's husband, Jason Beck, texted her or messaged her and just said, wanna fuck? <laughs> And they're still together. They are in love. She is happy. She's got kids. I'm just so happy. Melissa won. Melissa's got a great life. New teeth. Uh, living it up. She a looks different great. haircut. She doesn't have that little Rizzo wig anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Rizzo wig. She looks great. She does. She does. And so we get the race package, which is fantastic because now we know that Julie's going to stick her foot in her mouth again. Mm-hmm. And so the real world franchise made a huge mistake in how they handled the race conversation and how it was framed. And uh, Melissa got literal hate mail for being offended over the N word in the <laughs> swamp tour. And she says maybe, and this is, true maybe it was cut together with a white lens as i was annoying Mm -hmm. so true it happens all the time and then they open up the conversation to everyone and immediately julie is like her body language is like oh no now i'm gonna be in trouble no one else is acting like that right no one else in this conversation has that energy not even matt (laughs) okay but julie is And she's acting like she can't form a fucking sentence. And they're all trying to like Kelly is Kelly's like, look, we're just, you know, we're trying to find out. And and then Julie says, well, it's hard to take in information when my teachers are yelling at me. (laughs) Melissa was like mid sentence and she just stops. (laughs) And she has this fan and she's like. I forgot she had the fan. <laughs> she had the fan. And she's like, and she needs that fan. Like, she's mm-hmm. like, calm down, calm down. <laughs> it's like, so Kelly somehow manages to say she's, she's, we're not aware of what you've learned. Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you read anything that's changed your mind? Because <laughs> remember, you said that whole horrible thing, like, in my family, if you had asked me to grab something out of the fridge, we'd say, what color do I look? The package of, Ju- I feel like any time they use the clip of Julie in the original season, she's just committed to hell immediately. <laughs> anytime they air it, because she truly was and is terrible. Mm-hmm. And then she says, <laughs> I feel like you're trying to say I'm a racist. <laughs> Maybe. Well, <laughs> <yeah>. well. <laughs> uh. and then finally, Julie says she admits I've lived a privileged life. And then she remembers that Tokyo had come into her room and was like, do you mind watching me open this suitcase? Because he was trying to figure out if it was his. And she's like, oh, my God, you know, I've never had to think that way. And that made me go, wow, because I'm so privileged. And. Then this spirals her into an apology for her bullshit about club night. And as much as like, I'm supposed to be like, oh, good. She realized that it's like, okay. So then you had all of this knowledge and information Uh when you were doing all that bullshit over club night. Yeah. And that is, I know people learn different things at different times, but I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) I don't want to diminish people that are late to the party when we learn things. But like, for instance, her learning about the suitcase, fine. That might have been the first time you experienced that. But like you said, club night, like, isn't about that. Or it kind of is. But like, that is just something you should have known already. You don't need to be taught that. (laughs) It's like, so... The suitcase thing happened first day. Yeah. The club night thing happened either later the first night, mm-hmm. right? Was the first night? And the second, because Danny was second already night. hungover. Yeah. Okay. So first night suitcase, first day suitcase, second day uh, club night thing. Mm-hmm. So she's, was she like piecing all that together? And she's like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> No, I like it. She's it's so performative Mm -hmm. and she's incredibly calculating and it is terrifying. Yes. Back to 
her first second in the house when she hugged Danny and cried. Like, this woman knows what she is doing. Like, Julie is someone who would stab someone to death, and I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Like, in a true crime, if there was a true crime series that came out and, like, Julie ended up murdering someone, I'd be like, yep. Must we repeat, she tried to unlock Veronica's safety harness on the challenge. Attempted murder happened right in front of our eyes. I still am confused. Like, I've watched that clip a bunch of times. because I'm like, she is literally trying to unclip the one thing that's keeping Veronica from plummeting off the zip line. Right. And they're like screaming at her not to do it. But like she's and then in her confessional, she's like, I saw her safety. And like, that's my one opportunity. I was like, I wanted to win. (laughs) You wanted to kill her? Yeah, she's nuts. (laughs) You wanted to kill her. (laughs) I I will link the clip. I will link the clip Uh, in the description because you have to see it to believe it. (laughs) I'm not exaggerating. She literally is trying to kill her for money. (laughs) To win one challenge. It's not even like the big grand prize. It's no. one challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I get I get like hot thinking about it because I like still can't believe. Yeah. Where's my fan? Walk- <laughs> um, so but here's what we love about Melissa. Not only does she have this amazing moment, but then she thinks about it later. The, the conversation about race, it ends. Melissa realizes she's like, look, I know I came in real hot with Julie. I had a stank tone. <laughs> so I need to go apologize. So she goes to Julie. No, first Julie was talking to da- uh, Tokyo and Melissa walks out and she's like, can I have a minute? And so Julie assumes it's with Tokyo. <laughs> and so Julie goes to get up and she goes, no, 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 with you. And Julie gets like scared. She's like, <laughs> oh, and she goes, don't be scared. <laughs> And so then she sits down and apologizes. She's like, look, I came in really hot. It's a really heated subject and I didn't need to come in that hot and gives her a good apology, but doesn't still holds her boundary Mm -hmm. and says, so now we can go back to tiptoeing around each other until you can (laughs) get yourself together. (laughs) I love Melissa so much. (sighs) And then this episode ends perfectly with Mercy and Shorty arriving. (laughs) And what a great, like, it just shifts everything Mm -hmm. in the house. Like, what great parents. Like, she just starts cooking and Tokyo's helping and they're intersplicing Tokyo's cooking song clips. (laughs) And this and like, oh, my God. And then the story of Melissa and Julie being at Blink-182's house. Yeah. It's so funny how, like, famous they were, like how big celebrities love them, like Beyonce and. Uh, Insane. (laughs) What? (laughs) I think MTV really was like the moment. In this was the year 2000. So I think, I don't know. It was such a pop culture phenomenon. And New Orleans, I think, is the highest rated season of all time. So like really? they really were celebrities for a little bit of time. Unpaid celebrities. It's so crazy. The <laughs> brokest celebrities. With celebrities. No money, right. But celebrities. Wow. And then it ends in this great way. This family dinner is just so amazing. Like there's actual love there. We needed it Mm -hmm. because up until that point, it had been nothing but tension. Yeah. And so that this this moment of reprieve is lovely. It is. I want Melissa to do a giveaway where we can have dinner with her parents. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I'll message her since she follows me. You should message her and then we'll be the only one who enter it. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe just ask, maybe just ask if we can enter it. Okay, yeah. (laughs) Maybe just be like, hey, can we come over? (laughs) Yeah. Maybe not so much a giveaway, just we're inviting ourselves to dinner with your parents. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like here, we'll we'll message her like this. Hey, maybe you should host a giveaway. And by giveaway, I mean, can I come over? (laughs) Yeah, give it to me. Give it to (laughs) me. How does that sound? Um, all right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned next time. We'll be finishing up. Donnie's here for the rest of the season. We don't Woo! even know how many episodes there are. <laughs> because I think I think L.A. did eight. Uh-huh. And I think New York only did five. Yeah. So uh-huh. but this seems like it has a lot more content. I agree. And they're <laughs> not done. Like they haven't even gone through all of the 
all of the people yet. So, um, um, Johnny, tell the people where to find you. Of course. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Real Donnywood, or you can listen to I Am the Cute One, a nostalgia podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. And please like this video and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.